Are you tired of intense medieval combat or stressful strategic games? Then maybe Siege Survival Gloria Victus is just what you need right now. Gloria Victus pits you in a medieval city under siege where you play as a band of civilians like farmers, builders and merchants, mix in survival and strategy to build up the camp, scavenge the city and manage resources in order to, to fundamentally support the army defending the city that you're trapped in being sieged. I received a review copy of this game a while ago, like a preview version, and I covered a first impressions video. That was about half of the game we had access to, but now the full game is out, I wanted to give a more detailed and fuller review. Now I'm able to play the whole game, I can be more critical, as there's, there's no hiding behind a preview build, and I can give you more of an overview because I've seen more of the game. So before we get into the review, if you like medieval survival and strategy games, subscribe to the channel for more. We're going to be playing a ton of games like this. We're playing Chivalry 2 Beta this week. So yeah, subscribe to see that first or join the Discord to come play and chat with the rest of us. So let's go through the game. The story, as you can imagine, the city is under siege and your job is to survive and support the troops fighting to defeat the enemies. You start with one character and quickly gain a second and then you can get other characters in events later on in the game. And your job is threefold. Manage resources to build, craft, and keep your people and animals alive and safe. Two, go behind enemy lines and scavenge the enemy-occupied city for supplies at night or scout the enemy for information. And three, support the troops defending the city by keeping them fed, their weapons and armor repaired, and the wall bolstered. Let's go through these one by one. The first one, the daytime activities that you'll be doing. This is the most punishing and challenging part of the game. You never have enough resources, you never feel comfortable, and there's always a hard decision to be made. Is there a food shortage? You, you choose to feed your animals, or you feed the troops, or you feed your playable characters, or do you sacrifice one of your animals in a last ditch attempt to keep the people alive? Do you use the last of your wood to craft firewood to make food, or do you upgrade a building that, you're gonna, that you need to keep yourself alive? Or do you build a bed to sleep one of your new people, or do you build a new item that the army needs? You never feel safe. If you like these dark and desperate times of gameplay, you're going to really like this. Personally, it reminds me a lot of Frostpunk. If you, if you want something chilled and relaxing, this is not for you. It's, it starts out with the illusion of a very relaxing game, but you're going to quickly realize this is a pressure cooker that just keeps getting hotter the more you play. A little bit spicy. I find myself constantly trying to progress. I thought, once I get a farm, the food issue is going to resolve. Once I get enough people in buildings, once I get enough people, the building issues are going to be resolved. But once I had a repair bench, I could repair weapons faster, things like that. I thought, once I get to this next step, everything's going to get better. But it never stopped. You get more food, you have more people to feed, the army needs more food, the wars get harder, more stuff needs fixing. You have to venture out further and resources are scar scarcer. The, the game just keeps getting harder, in my opinion. And honestly, I love this. If you beat this game on the first playthrough, you are a strategic god and I respect you. I've done two long playthroughs before I had any success with this game. My third one finally started to go well, but it makes it so much more better, so much more better, so much better when you progress <laughs> further into the story and further into the game. I don't want to include too much late game here because I don't want to spoil it. There is some really cool buildings and cool events later in the game, but I'm going to leave that for you to find if you play it. You can probably, I'll show everything here up to like maybe... 10 in game days so then i'm not showing too much of the exciting stuff everything it depending on where you go in the camp where you go in the city you can get to different places within the first few days so i shouldn't be ruining anything with this gameplay the second part that i mentioned is the the nighttime activities when you're going around scavenging from the city if you liked how difficult the resource management sounded i got a surprise for you this part is gonna mess you up too because this is also hard. Resources on the map are finite. You find 20 wood, you go back and you use that. That's gone. You don't go back and find that wood again, generally. Um, I hope you use the wood for something important because you need to go find more somewhere else if, the, if, it, if there even is any. You find a shovel and you open a path to a new area. That shovel's gone, so I hope you went to the right area. Uh, additionally, every decision here counts and you're timed under the constant threat of guards and you have to get here before the daytime comes. Uh, there's events here as well, so when you first get here, you'll see like an ominous man hanging from a tree. And that's that's your first sign of how dark this city is in the evening. And do you rob a grieving person for selfish gain or to help the army? Or do you help them in the chances of it benefiting you later on? Or at least help you keep your morality? My thoughts here were always for the troops defending. If a civilian dies or I have to steal or I have to do something a little bit dirty or even injure one of my own workers. If that improves our chances to win the next battle, I would do it. And I had to face the consequences 
in game and mentally of of making those dark decisions and you're going to have your own compass too of where you draw the line what you're willing to do and what you're happy with maybe you're going to focus more on your troops and the people and the animals maybe you're going to focus more on keeping a balance for me i always put the the soldiers fighting at the forefront but yeah everyone's different and that there's a lot of flexibility on how you want to play the game here whatever you decide you're going to get pushed to a stressful situation and it's going to stress you out but it is what it is lastly the guards the guards are kind of a joke if i'm being honest i don't think the guards are very good someone runs towards you you just go hide um, if you do get in a fight, they're surprisingly easy, easy to beat, even with like a non-combat character. I didn't have much trouble. The only good part here is the threat system. So if you play GTA, it's like a star system. Once you're found, the threat goes up in that area for the next night and there'll be more patrols the next night. So I fought and killed a guard because I, I wanted to see what happened and the whole area was on high alert. I physically couldn't go there the next night without getting caught. Uh, I went there the next night. It was swamped, so I just left. The next night after that, it was still really high alert, so I left it again. And I've lost a lot of resources that I would have needed. I had no food. People starved. I had to kill animals. We lost the war. And yeah, game over. I started again. So yeah, you're going to be punished when you fail. And you're going to be rewarded when you, won, when you, when you win. And that's incredible in my opinion. So the last part, which I've mentioned already, and this is intertwined with everything else. Managing the Bastion. I fucking love this part of the game. Watch your profanity. Right, I'm sorry. It's incredible. You open up the bastion window and see a, like a status of the soldiers defending the sea. Everything you do in game funnels into this. Food, water, bandages, crafting arrows, repairing weapons and armor, repairing the wall. As soon as you're doing well, the bastion will demand more. Think of it like a big corporation where you make a bit of profit and the shareholders demand more. It's like this. Every single time you think, yes, we broke even. Yes, we're doing well. Nope, they, they're going to want more and more. The, the food thing quickly spirals when you've got like 30 troops and they're demanding these big high amounts of food you've only got like two villagers and they need to eat once a day but the army is just demanding so much food more than your your villagers and your animals so yeah and then when they get into a big fight they're going to send you a ton of broken weapons broken armor you get attacked by siege weapons you have to repair the wall and it, it just spirals and spirals to a point where if you're not playing optimally and if you're not building and upgrading everything as best as possible it's going to progress faster than you are and you're going to lose a fight and once you start the losing streak you you really do start the losing streak and it's hard to it's hard to bounce back from this but if you if you do well you keep everything well stocked and healthy and you start winning fights it feels amazing it feels amazing to know you've contributed and you do get slightly involved you see the fire arrows coming in the siege weapons you can support with there's some really cool things you can get involved with that i don't want to ruin but it really does make you feel like you're part of the war. And overall, this system turns the game for me from like a six to a nine. It really, really brings it up to be an amazing game. If it was just managing the town and going in and getting resources, it, it wouldn't do it for me. But the Bastion side really, really is amazing. I think they've done a great job here. So yeah, I think it goes without saying, overall, I'm a huge fan. As I said already, I received this game for free to review. If you've seen my videos before, you know that that does not bias me. I recently reviewed uh, Frozenheim, which I got for free. And if you've seen that, you'll know when a game is bad, I will go in on it. I will not let you spend your money on a game which I don't think is good. I will make it very clear that this game is not worth buying. That's not the case here. The game is uh, £21, I think, on Steam, which in my opinion is a little more than you'd expect from an indie game like this but it's worth it. Trust me when I say there is a ton of content here. It is so replayable. There's other modes as well. There's like a new game plus. There's like a challenges mode. There is more than enough content here and the games are long to play out. You're not going to do it first time. You're not going to do everything you want to do first time, even if you do do it first time. There is a lot to play. You, I, I've got a love-hate relationship with this game. I've been playing it on and off for a while now because I've had it for a while since the preview build. You're going to come close to finishing or to progressing and something's going to happen and you're going to lose. You're going to get angry and close the game. And then a few hours later, you'll get that itchy feeling of, I want to do this now. And you'll go back in. It reminds me a lot of Dark Souls. You get stressed, you quit, and then you go back and try and do it. And I love that. I love that. There's not much else to say here. If you've listened to what I've said, combined with watching the gameplay in the background, I think you'll know already if it's for you. I see this sort of game and I already know that it's for me. Um, you're going to have the same issue. If you like simulation, resource management style games like this War of Mine, Frostpunk, uh, or other like building simulation games, you're going to like this, I think. I think this is 100% not one to miss. If you like those sort of games and you like medieval games, 
this is the perfect combination. If you're looking for an action or a strategy game or a casual sim style playthrough, this ain't it. This is stressful. This is a, this is a rough game. I'm probably going to end it here, guys. That's a pretty good summary of what I think. Big fan. Really like it. Highly recommend it. If you like this sort of game, if you're looking for, you know, a, uh, a huge Banner Lord style game and you go buy this, don't come back and say, oh, I didn't get to do any fighting because you could go through this whole game without drawing a sword or punching or throwing a punch. This really is not an action game. Um, if you like the video, let me know in the comments or drop a like and let me know what you think of the game. I'd be interested because, um, yeah, I want to I want to know what other people think about this because I'm a big fan. At first, I wasn't so sure. I think in my first impressions, I was kind of on the fence, but it's won me over. Other than that, guys, take care and I'll catch you in the next one.